First, we're going to start out doing the outline just to give an idea of the type of body we're going to go with. And I'm using an oil pastel here just to squiggle some on here. Um, pretty easy peasy. You don't even have to do this. I just did this just to kind of play with it actually, to be, to be honest. <laughs> I'm just playing. So now we're going to add the acrylics onto this. And I wanted to give it some color that would pop on the black canvas and also be um, aesthetically pleasing to the eye. So I went with the more um, softer pastels. So I'm using a flat tip brush, blending it with the white to give it that pop. And we're just gonna fill in these flowers and give it some body. Also squiggling it around on the canvas to bring all the colors together, which you'll see later in the picture, how that all brings it together. Now we're going to add some buds to the stems here just to give it more of a fuller canvas. And that is pretty much what we're going to be doing is just filling this canvas up with a whole lot of flowers <laughs> and then filling in the back um, drop to make it all pop and come out. And this is more of an aesthetically, not a Monet type thing, but kind of an abstract. I didn't want to go with the exact, you know, type floral. I wanted something different. I'm going for more of a... a on this piece, you'll notice that I'm doing a different technique than I do on some of the other pieces. And I just wanted to kind of give some versatility, more of an abstract style type flower. I didn't want to go with a realistic, I wanted to be more abstract. Here we're using the different colors to blend it all together. Again, this is the acrylic paint and the gauchi paint. Mixing it together, uh, and the gauchi, and I'm probably saying it wrong, <laughs> is more of a thinner, It when it covers, it doesn't cover as heavy as the acrylic does. One of the things I've learned using these mediums is once you get it dried, it's pretty important to seal that up right away for it doesn't dry and crack. You want to preserve it. So that kind of gives you an idea of what it's looking like as we continue to add some green and some foliage in here. On this one here, now I'm using a round tip brush for the leaves. And if you follow me, you know that on my Amazon personal profile account, you can go in there and I have lists put together for you. So if you wanted to see what type of paint brushes I'm using or paint, you're welcome to do that. These um, particular paints and brushes would be under the, the painting supply list. So you can just go in there. Um, the link is in the description below and there's at this time, um, no affiliated, you know, kickback or anything, but that could change in time. But today, as I'm doing this recording, I just have a personal profile set up for you. You can take advantage of the different materials I use and what I buy on Amazon. I also pick up a lot of my supplies from Michaels, as well as when I'm out shopping, if I see a good deal or whatever. Um, it's just depending what's out there, what's available. So I'm going to let you continue to enjoy this little share and then I will pop back and share a little bit more insight in a few minutes. You'll notice too, I'm painting on top of a glass sheet 
what I simply did was um, one of my frames that came with glass I just used the glass as my countertop on my desk here sometimes I use an easel because this is a smaller canvas I just kept it simple and I just put it right on the tap top of my um, creator's desk so that's a little trick that I do when it's all said and done if you take that sheet of glass and just put it under water it'll loosen up those um, paints and you can just scrape them off with a razor blade super easy peasy cleanup and it's just easy to come back and forth and work on it as you'll um, notice here I don't do this all in one setting I pop back and forth as my layers dry so don't feel like you have to do this all in one setting <laughs> set it to the side walk away come back get a different view on it and add to it you notice I'm doing the sides of the canvas as well. This could be hung with or without a frame. So I like to do um, the full canvas. It also helps when you put the paint on the canvas, the canvas will shrink more to that frame as well because it will tighten up. And then once this is all said and done, I will um, seal it with you know the clear sealer and I will probably put the clear sealer in the back side of the canvas as well just to make it more taut. Another thing this particular style if you like this kind of style check out Amanda Hilburn. She's another YouTuber she's also on Facebook and various others and she's been doing this for a long time and her techniques and she has classes and all that stuff that's available I don't do the classes myself personally because I just kind of watch and learn but she is a great resource just to get inspiration and style and pattern from and you'll see some you know similarities there I think her site is the little bluebird gallery um, but if you look up Amanda Hilburn um, I actually should kind of put that in my link for people can find that <laughs> But just um, YouTube, you know, do a search and you'll find her on Facebook, even if you just Google it. She has similar styles to this and she's really good at what she does. Now you notice I'm adding black to this. Black makes it pop. And so I wanted to make those um, dimensions and the flowers come out and pop. And that's just the style I'm going for. It's pretty raw, abstract, but that's what I wanted. That's what I wanted to go for on this particular piece. Doesn't always have to be perfect. Life isn't perfect. It can get kind of messy. <laughs> so enjoy the process and just go for it. Don't, don't get yourself all locked in and making it look exactly like. Just do your thing. And there you go, that is a finished product pretty much. I'm going to take a pin to it and do some black outlines as well as some white outlines. Add a little bit more green in here. I'm using the Gauchi paint because it's laying thinner over this top. So I'm highlighting that um, just to give it a little bit more dimension and pop. That's what the lighter paints are really good for is, is accenting once a piece is pretty much done and you want to lay over it. And don't be afraid to blend your colors and make your own colors too. I'm not a color wheel chart person. I just kind of use my eyeballs <laughs> and go for it. Kind of be a little reckless. Why not?
You'll probably notice that as I'm blending these colors in, I'm using quite a bit of white to blend and tone down the colors. That just makes it softer, but it also makes these leaves and the flowers just have more accentuation. You know, it, it just pops more. So I, I really do like using the white just to soften and bring these colors out. And to know me is to know I like white. <laughs> I can't share that enough. That's that's uh, my fave is using that white to bring that all together. See how different that looks? And don't feel like you need to cover up all your black canvas because if you painted your canvas before you started with the black and then you're doing this on top of it, it's just really going to make it pop. So put a light layer of black paint on it and then start your piece while it's um, almost dry but not quite dry. You want it still a wet just for it could pull those colors and blend a little bit. So just a little reminder, don't forget to subscribe and set your notify if you'd like to see more shares like this. I also have other playlists for different things that we do here. Jewelry making, wreath making, crafts, um, DIY projects, painting on glass. So this just goes on. So the best thing to do is just check out my channel. <laughs> Um, I have over 300 videos and shorts that you can look at and get a feel for um, what we make and create here at Allie's Creations. And we're just going to add a little bit of white on here after we do the black. We're going to seal it up with the clear varnish just to preserve it. And it also makes those colors pop and it keeps the um, acrylics from drying and cracking. So you want to do that. So here we just put the white on there, a little signature, and we are golden, we are good. And just a few more touch-ups. The beauty of having the paint on your table like that, you can go back in and work it some more if you want. So remember to subscribe and set your notify. <laughs> this is the scary part. Let it dry before you do this. <laughs> This sat overnight. In fact, I think I sat for a couple of days before I put this on. I want to make sure it was good and dry. So, and it doesn't take much. Just a little, little dabble, do ya? <laughs> so, um, until next time, have a good day and a better tomorrow. May the Lord bless you and keep you. Thank you for hanging out with me at Hallie's Creations. I hope you enjoyed this little share. Don't forget to subscribe and set your notify. Check me out on Facebook as well and TikTok. And we are done. I'm also on Instagram too. <laughs> and that's it. <laughs> Thank you for jumping in on Hallie's Creations. I hope you enjoy this next share. And without any further ado, let's do this. Don't forget to subscribe and notify, or you won't miss out on any more videos.
And we're moving on to the second chair. And this, this chair is done with oils and a palette knife. There's the palette knife and white oil. So what we're gonna do is first frost that, yeah, we're gonna frost it with um, the white oil. And the paint that I just showed you is the one that I really like. And you can find that on my Amazon profile page under Hallie's Creations under the um, painting supplies. And what we're going to do is just put that on there nice and thick. And the reason we're going to do that is it's going to give us that first a nice clean base. And second, we can pull the colors up and through that white and it just makes it really pretty. So um, first, let's just frost this off and get that on there and then go to the next step. So this next step, you're going to load your palette knife and you're going to load it on the side and you're just going to drag it. So you can either drag from top to bottom or bottom to top. However, what we're doing is we're making vines. We're making the stems for the flowers. So what I also share my other um, video shares as I've grown and I've learned my art a little bit more, my techniques, is use the colors you like. Don't don't try to copy what I'm doing here. Honestly, I'm just kind of using the colors that I already had. <laughs> and then I added to it the colors I like as well. And I was just kind of figuring it out. So just kind of play with it, have fun with it. Um, and don't get locked into trying to replicate or duplicate. Be um, using this for inspiration and do your thing. I think, um, that's just the best way what I've learned is I, I look at other artists to, to draw inspiration and art pieces and then I go from there. Honestly too, going down the road I'll look out the window and I'll see a field of wildflowers or something along the roadside when we're traveling and that just sparks that, that creativity. So get out there, I'm going hikes, enjoy life and just pull some inspiration for these and they don't have to be exact realism you, this is abstract this is impressionism and it's just having fun with it so load up that canvas and you're just tipping and dragging that and you notice i'm using the long palette knife palette knives are not that expensive they're on my amazon profile page um, but you can buy them anywhere but it shows you the ones i use and it's kind of you know finding the ones that work good for you so yeah you can even if you don't have a palette knife you can use a spoon you can use a knife you can use a fork anything that's going to give you that sharp edge where you can apply it so now we're going to start blending our colors and, and making the magic happen here You'll notice here too as I'm putting these on that I go along the edge of the canvas and I'll, I'll run the palette knife across the edge of that canvas just to kind of finish it off. Because sometimes, especially with the newer art, you don't always frame it. So you want your edges and your sides to look nice as well. And another thing that I'm starting to do, um, and I just can't wait to get back into my studio, get this house sold and get, get our new home made and get my studio back up and running is um, I'm going to start sealing off the back of my art and making that unique and different as well because I want when somebody buys something of mine which I don't sell that many pieces um, but when I do I want it to be nice and I want it to be professional and clean so that's another thing you can take um, and maybe spray paint the back of your canvas if you want to just keep it easy speed easy speedy easy speedy or if you want to you um, paint it as well just put a coat of paint on there but I'm just probably going to spray paint it and then seal it with a clear you know how I seal the fronts of my um, acrylic paints and then maybe 
put my signature in there, put a card in there, a little cert certification of authenticity to make it nice. So anyway, that's something you can do, just a little share that I wanted to share with you that I'll be doing on my pieces. And then here now, what we're going to get back to the painting, <laughs> what we're going to do now here is we're just going to take your favorite colors and you're going to start making flowers with the tip of that palette knife. And you're just going to dab, 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 dab. And as you're dabbing on here, you're going to see as you get into the creation and it's more being um, where you can see it as the pieces go on there, the, the paint pieces, how that white pulls up through that. And so it blends it and brings it all together. And it just makes it really pretty. So just um, you can blend your colors together and then add them on or um, you can just take them straight out of the tube, whatever you want to do. Some artists blend their colors and make their own unique colors, which is cool. I do both, but um, on this piece, I kept it simple because I wanted you to be able to have a feel for it and know how to do it. So here we're putting the yellow in and then we'll be putting other colors in as well. But all you're doing is taking that tip of that palette knife, just the very tip of it, and you're just dabbing and tipping and dragging and tipping and dragging and pulling that white up into the yellow as you place it on. So we're going to do that for a while and I'll be back. <laughs> I'll be back.
So here now we're doing some pink wildflowers into the mix of it. Remember how I shared earlier going down the roadside or getting out hiking, you see the different areas and the different um, mixtures of flowers that are out there in the fields. And so I wanted to bring some different colors into this piece. I wanted to keep it simple, but I also wanted colors into it. So all these are is basically taking the tip of your palette knives, kind of play with your palette knives, get a feel for how they're going to um, lay out the, the petals for you. And then that'll give you different um, textures and techniques. This is a different palette knife I'm using here. I was just experimenting with it. And you see how I'm rebuking it right now and going, no, I don't like that. And I went back to the smaller tip. I like the pointed tip, tip and drag, not too pointy. They have like a round tip on it, and those make really nice wildflower petals. So there's that. Another tip, too, I want to tell you as we're talking, and I do this in my shares when I'm actually talking to you, and I'm doing this share like on a Facebook Live or a live share, is when you're working with oils and palette knives, you want to have a washcloth, a towel handy, for you can be wiping your tips as you're going along. That keeps your um, knives looking nice and clean, and that um, oil paint doesn't dry and get all chunky on there. That will happen if you leave the paint on your palette knives, and you don't want that. Another thing, too, is use some Dawn dish soap. And you can use any dish soap, but Dawn dish soap actually works best. That's what I have found, what I like best. Um, and it really cuts that oil. And then another thing, too, is if your oils are really thick and kind of gumpy, mix a little tiny drop of either um, baby oil. Yeah, baby oil will work. Just a little drop or two or a, the mineral oil, you know, and that will thin out your oil paints for you can make them more pliable and thinner and smoother and they'll they'll... Um, apply to your paintings a little bit easier. Just keep in mind when you're working on oil paintings and you're doing this for the first time, oil paintings take forever to dry. <laughs> for me, you'll see in the back there how I have a drying wall and that is literally a drying wall. When I'm working on pieces and I want to have it dry a little bit before I put another layer on or whatever, or when I'm done even, I put it on the drying wall. And they do, they take forever and what do you mean Hallie forever oil paints never dry <laughs> really in reality they don't but they get to where you can move them around and stuff in about a month or so but it takes a while that's how come if you want to do something lickety split you wanted to get it out there you want to be able to seal it gift it whatever sell it do acrylics do the gouchy do that kind of stuff watercolors but if you're looking for longevity a little bit more richness and color pop then the oils is the way to go I work with all of them. I love them all. <laughs> so it just depends on what mood I'm in that day. A little ADHD, OCD, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. That's me. I got a little bit of it all in me. And I, I like things clean and organized, but I also bounce all over the place. So <laughs> that's just who I am. But anyway, <laughs> getting back to this, <laughs> uh, on your oils, just give yourself a space in your home that you know your little ones aren't gonna you know knock into it or guest or anything and be able to put it up and have it dry um, I use push pins that way I can just move them around now in my new studio you'll see the setup and you'll go ooh I want that but right now in home that's what I use I use push pins I have a different ideal for my studio and it's gonna be so cool I can't wait to share it with you um, but moving forward here a couple of stick pins little push pins set it up on a wall high enough to where people aren't going to be knocking into it and let it dry walk away and then um, if you decide you're looking at it in a week or two and you decide you want to add to it then go for it it's not done until you say it's done art is art right <laughs> and don't worry about what other people think I try to always share this with you you do your art for you don't worry about what other people think because everyone's going to have an opinion they they are so this little piece here I pulled off of another artist inspiration and I saw it and I thought, oh, that's kind of cool. And I didn't duplicate it, but I took it for inspiration and made my, my own spin off of it. So remember, you can do that and just have fun with your art. You're not stealing it. Um, and give the artist credit. Um, one of the artists that I like to um, kind of just pull inspiration from is Amanda Hilburn. The little blue gallery bluebird gallery and she's on youtube facebook she's all over the place and she's really good and she's very unique and very different and um i think she's a sister in the lord too i'm not sure but i think she is but um 
I just love her art and her style and her willingness to get out there and teach people and show people. She has classes in the whole nine yards. So if you want to check her out, I would definitely, you know, do a little search and check out her artwork. You'll be able to pull some really cool inspiration off of her. And you'll see where I pull some of my inspiration from. So we're just going to, we're just tipping and dragging. We're pulling that white up into the other colors and just blending this all together. And we're just making a fill of wildflowers. Of course, you know, in the fields, there's a little bit of grass, a little bit of flowers on the ground, so we're doing that as well. Just bringing in um, some dirt and some grass and some roughness to that, just to give it a little bit of, not realism, but kind of, kind of. <laughs> so I'm going to let you enjoy this share, and then we'll be jumping onto the third share here shortly, and I'll walk you through, talk you through that one as well. Meanwhile, this girl's going to go get a cup of coffee while you finish watching this. <laughs>
So here I'm showing you the different colors I've used on this particular piece. You don't have to use these colors. Remember earlier I told you to find the colors that spark joy for you and the brands you like to work with. Um, the Monet I love is the best. What I'm showing you right now, I love that. It's just a smooth, silky um, oil-based color and it's water-based so you don't have all those fumes that are going to kill you in time. <laughs> <laughs> Try to get a water-based oil if you can, just for you not breathing in those those nasty, yucky um, fumes. So anyway, just showing you the colors here. You can use a toothbrush to splatter that, or you can actually buy paint splatters. I have that on my channel as well. See that little glop there that happened with the paintbrush that happens with the splatter? You don't get that as much, but splatter it just to bring it all together. And now we're moving on to the third share. And this one here is basically the same idea, but we're doing it with the blue and white mixed background with um, the yellow and the purple uh, on top of the vines here, kind of like a pansy type flower. We're going to do this again. Let's do this. So frost your canvas is like you're frosting a cake, just like we did on the other one. Remember too, you can spin your canvas around. You're not locked into keeping it in one stationary place. Just smooth it out. The worst case scenario is you're spinning your canvas around. If you get your thumbprints into it or whatever, just, just wipe over it. You're putting yourself into your art, man. <laughs> just have fun with it. So now we're gonna dab just a smidge of blue in there, blend it in with the white, and just give it that nice soft blue. And I love this blue. This blue I've had for years, so I couldn't even tell you where to get it from. It's been in my inventory. I'm talking years. So um, for the longest time, and I'll give you a little story about who I am. <laughs> for those of you that have hung in this long, I am a retired administrative school secretary, and I did that for over 20 years. Absolutely loved it. Raised my family former foster parent and if you know anything about fostering you know that that just is extremely time consuming on top of having a full-time job and just you know kiddos that needed to go to the doctor therapy and all that stuff we've had different kiddos in and out of our home I have our son um, he was our first adopted kiddo and um, he is um, he's 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 ours he, he can't deny it we've had him since birth but we've had other kiddos in and out of our home as well um, and even like my niece and nephew, they, I'm their auntie, but I'm also to my niece, I'm her mom. <laughs> we raised her for a really long time. Um, but anyway, that's kind of my story. So my husband didn't even know when I started doing art that I knew how to do this stuff because my focus was on my job and my family and my kids. And that's what we do, right moms? That's what we do. Um, we take care of our families and dads. You know, we put our life on hold and then we come back to it when life gives you time. And now that, you know, I have the time, I'm playing with art, which is my jam. But my family really, you know, my, my son knew this was hidden in there somewhere, but my husband's like, wow, I didn't know you knew how to do all this stuff. But um, now I have time to play, and now I'm doing it. So it's all good. It all worked out. I have my amazing um, family, my life, and we're, we're moving forward, and now I'm playing with my art. So here, um, I'll share a little bit more in a second. I want to tell you what I'm doing here. We're um, putting the green on here, and I use like a, a really um, bright green with the dark green mix to give it that deep vine look. And now we're just dragging it, and we're letting it be sloppy because that's the look I'm going for here. So load up that side of your knife and just drag it down and start making some real sloppy, fun vines. Um, what we're gonna do with this piece is we're adding leaves to it as well with the same color. And so we're just gonna blosh, blop, 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 blop those on. <laughs> that's the way I do that. Sorry, but that's what we're gonna do. And I could dub that out, but I'm gonna be real with you. So we're just gonna leave it in there. So we're just going to dab, 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 and make those leaves come out. And we're not gonna worry about getting each leaf per perfect because we don't want that. This is impressionism, this is fun, this is a little abstract, and we're just gonna have fun with it. So just tip and drag for the leaves and just load up those vines with your leaves. 
and then um, we're going to spin this in a little bit and we're going to um, frame the top of it basically the same way. So right now we're just going to load this all up, all up with the leaves. And see how I left that, that blue and white rough where it's kind of blending but popping out so it's not all blue or all white, it's mixed in there. So don't, don't get caught up with um, having everything perfect. Kind of give yourself the freedom to be reckless um, and just have fun with it. You can go back and tighten it up later if you're not happy with it, but try to be a little reckless. I, was, I, I challenge you to do that. Just get in there and go nuts, go crazy, and just throw it all on there. Stand back, take a breath, give it a day maybe even, and come back and look at it. You, you might surprise yourself. You may be very happy with it. So just get in there and just have fun with it, just like if you were a kid. So I get back to my little story there that I started to tell you about. <laughs> I actually took art in college. Um, I didn't have the opportunity to finish out because I did become a mom. I, I met the love of my life and uh, we, we raised a family. Um, I've had my grandkids often tell me, Grammy, you should go back and finish up. And it's like, why? <laughs> I, I'm done, you know, I've, I've done the job that I was going to school for, I've, I, I've learned the different techniques that I was, you know, going for, and yeah, um, I just want to play, <laughs> I don't want to be locked into a schedule, I just want to play, but uh, I had the opportunity to um, sit in on some different painting classes, so I was able to learn some different techniques from that, just watching a lot of YouTubes. I'm watching different artists and various artists. Um, the social media that we have now, you take advantage of that and you can so learn so much from so many different people that have already gone there, been there, done that, and figured it out. So that's kind of where I'm at. I just kind of look at other artists. I draw from their inspiration and I just try different things. And I encourage you to do the same thing. Get in there, be a kid, have fun, and just have, get your art on. Just have fun. Get your creativity going. So on here what I'm doing is I'm adding white to my flowers and the reason I'm doing that is I want to give it some pop and some accent so I have my colors going and I again I work pretty much straight out of the tubes on these particular shares because it's just easier as you're learning I'm mixing colors and stuff like that is something you can do as you go along and you grow and you learn what you're doing so this is kind of where I'm at I'm putting the white in there blending it um, with the colors that are on there pulling up that blue and that white off the background because I did put it on there pretty thick and heavy and that just kind of gives it that continuity and this brings it all together because those colors are already on the canvas and now they're coming up through the flowers so it looks pretty cool so I'll go ahead I I challenge you to try <laughs> Try that and just give it a shot. And if you're scared, you don't want to do like an 8x10 or a 5x7, do a smaller one. You don't have to go big scale. Do a small one.
So now I'm blending my greens, my leaves into everything. So I'm la layering some leaves on. Because I, what I've seen some, um, a lot of people do when they're doing their art, they're afraid to go over the pieces that they've already done, the strokes they've already done. And on palette knife painting, and even when you're doing stroke art, it's okay to layer it. In fact, that gives it more of a realistic and more of a visual flow, and I like that. So now what we're doing here is I'm using the little stylus, and those of you that follow me know that you know these you can pick up at the Dollar Tree for dollar twenty-five now, and these are just little tiny stylus, and I'm adding some white accents into it just to give it that pop, like a baby breath. Not that a vine out in the wild would have that, but. If this was like a backdrop or something like that, then it probably would. So, and you're you're the artist, you're the creative person. You make it the way you want. So I can't I can't encourage you enough to do that. So just um, go in there and add your accents, whatever your favorite colors are. I'm doing the white because white's my fave, and we're just going to go in there and blend those little tiny dots into the flowers. Now I could have left it that way, but no, wait, <laughs> there's more. I did the other side. I decided it needed more but that would have been totally fine just leaving it that way so you don't have to do the other side of it that what we're gonna do now Here I went through and I did the, the paintbrush splatter. And again, like I shared earlier, you can get the splatter, little splattering tool as well. The key on the paintbrush splattering is don't load it up. Just put a tiny bit of paint on there, give it a little splatter, and you'll see. And if you want to make it heavier, you can, but start off very lightly. Thin it out and put it on very lightly. So now we're going to add to the bottom. We're going to do basically the same technique.
Here you'll notice I'm not doing the vines um, dragging down, I'm doing um, wrapping the corners with the leaves. And then we're, I'm going to pull that all together and make it all match.
file flowers doing the same technique tip, tip and drag tip and drag and then that's going to be pretty much it so i'm going to let you enjoy this little part of it and i am going to step away for a moment let this run while you watch this and remember too if you have questions you can send me a comment and i'm happy to um answer your questions i i respond to every reasonable comment <laughs> and um i'm more than happy to do that and I do hold them for review before posting them. So if you're trying to put in a link or something, that's not going to happen. But because um, I do that to protect my viewers, my followers. So I, I just don't want, you know, clutter out there. But if you do have questions or comments or you want to share um, maybe some inspiration, a place where I can pull inspiration from or, hey, Hallie, check this out. That is totally cool. Please do so. Remember to subscribe if you're watching this on YouTube and like um, for you don't miss out on any further shares that you're notified um, and that way you'll um, be notified when I do new uploads and if you're watching this on Facebook like and follow for the same reason that way you um, are notified when new um, new creations are released right now I'm going through my older pieces pulling them all together into collective pieces as we're in transition to make our move there are uh, digital shares that I'm doing that are new and fresh. Um, but yeah, so do that. Don't forget to um, subscribe and set your notify or like and follow. And now we're going to go on to the fourth piece here. And this one is really fun and so different. I absolutely love this black canvas. This honestly is my first uh, attempt at using black canvas and I wanted to share that process with you. Thanks for jumping on to Hallie's Creations and let's just play. So what I did is I used my oil pastels to do that outline and now I'm blending um, my paint and what I'm using here is what they call the Gauchi or Gucci or whatever. <laughs> I don't know what it's called. But anyway, it's like an acrylic paint. It's a little bit thinner. But what's really cool about this is the colors just really pop. So I'm having fun with that. So we are going to first lay out the leaves. I usually start my florals with leaves first. That's just my foundation. And then I, I build out from there. And you will see this transform into something totally different than what it looks like as we start. Now we're going to add a little white in there with a little yellow to give those um, leaves a little pop and then we're going to add our stems in and just continue to build this out. I'm feeling when I started this making a huge pot of florals and, and here's why. <laughs> oh, I have never done anything like this before. So I wanted just to get in there and get crazy and go for it and try different techniques. So I thought, you know, let's just videotape this and share this. So this is a long skinny paintbrush here and now we're using a flat tip um, paintbrush. So we went from the long skinny one to make the stems to a um, flat tip paintbrush. And you'll notice too when I'm doing my shares, I'm not telling you what number to get on the paintbrushes because each set is kind of different and I want you to be able to use the materials you have and you'll also see I have an Amazon personal profile at this time and now this may change years from now but right now I don't have affiliated links these are all just my personal links sharing with you the different um, materials and tools that I use to do my creations. so if you want to check out my paintbrushes I have this on my Amazon paintbrush list um, and these I think are the Mo Monet um, paintbrushes so now we're just going to add some more color to give it some more pop and if you've looked at other YouTube artists uh, how they do that half brush white half brush the color that's what gives that really fun pop to it and you'll also notice too how I just I'm constantly changing my brushes so that's just part of the artistic process. So don't be afraid to get out there and ex experiment because honestly, that's what I'm doing right now in this particular share. I'm playing and experimenting with techniques and different mediums 
and I just like I said I wanted to share that with you I just love how this black canvas makes all those colors pop so now I just went with a smaller flat tip and I'm just adding more color what I like to do um, those of you that follow know that I like white and so I add a lot of white to my pieces so we're just going to kick back here and enjoy the process for a little bit and then I'll talk a little bit more in a few minutes <laughs> So you just go dot, 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 and then how when you blend the white with the color, it just, it brings it together. Those are those little stems that I did with that long skinny brush, and now I'm adding the petals to it. I wasn't quite that long, was I? <laughs> I just like to share. So you just dab and pull, dot, 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 and you get those really cool looking petals. Just tap and drag and tap and drag. Super easy peasy. So for those of you that are out there going, I could never do that. Try it. <laughs> Just try it. It's fun. You'll surprise yourself. It's not that hard. The biggest thing is getting out of your head and just enjoying the process. My husband taught me that quite a while ago it's like just get out of your head don't overthink it just have fun because you're going to see where this is going to transform into something totally different it's crazy i started doing that blue basket because i thought hey you know that'd be kind of cool and then i didn't like it and then you'll see where i change it to another and finally it ends up to something totally different and that's that's the neat thing about art is you can just you could Adjust accordingly, just like life. Just tweak it and adjust it accordingly. See how you just tapping, tapping, tapping and making those fluffy little flowers. So much fun. One of the things that I do when I am um, painting, you'll notice how I have glass on my um, countertop. Thank you to several different YouTubers out there that I follow that I saw that and I thought, what a great idea, because you just let that paint dry and scrape it off. Now, you can't really do that with your oils, but you can with your acrylics and, and your other um, um, paints that dry pretty quick. So now we're just going to add some more leaves in here, give it a little bit more character. And I wanted some stems to put some buds on, so we need our, our little buds to go there and some more long skinny lines. Those are so much fun. So there we go. Don't be afraid to go over your colors because a true floral, they lay over each other. You'll also notice there that I have a water bottle. What I do is I spray my paint as I'm working with it to keep it um, pliable. So I have one jar that I rinse my paint brushes in, I have one that I keep my dry brushes in, and then I have one that I just keep them wet in. So you'll see um, in my shares I usually have three jars. Dry, rinse, and there you go. <laughs> so we're going to add the white highlights. I love white and you'll notice too on this black canvas it looks like I spray painted some white on there because I did <laughs> it was so much fun I got the white spray paint out and I thought oh let's just try this so it really gave it that pop and that highlighting so I'm just showing you the the flat rounded tip not the flat but the rounded tip brush I'm using to accentuate here and I'm just continuing to fill that basket up with flowers Don't be afraid to go over your flowers and just continue to build on them as well. If 
you don't like it, just work it again. <laughs> it's not that, it's like I said, it's not that hard. So I decided to build that bouquet out more and fill the canvas up so you'll see where it's going to explode here and there'll be even more florals and more colors in this. Part of the process on this particular share was playing with the different mediums, getting a feel for the paint because it's that gouch paint or gooch. <laughs> I should look that up. But anyway, it's uh, it's a, an acrylic type paint, um, pretty popular out there, and I wanted to try that. It does go on thinner than the acrylic, so I wasn't too impressed with that. <clears throat> and if you follow me, you know that I use more palette knives and oils. Um, so acrylic painting is, I know how to do it, but my jam is really the um, the oils and the palette knives. But this this particular piece with the black canvas, I I really. You'll probably see more shares on black canvas because I really liked it. So see how we just use that. I'm using that color to make it pop and bring that out more. The reason I'm doing that is I want it to all be cohesive and flow when I'm all said and done. So we're using some real bright orange little popping flowers now. And I'm just going to kick back and let you enjoy the process here a little bit. And explain a little bit more down the line. <laughs> You see that little oops there? Mistakes happen. <laughs> We're just going to build on that. Let's see what comes out of it. <laughs> Sorry, it happens. I think we'll just make that flower orange. <laughs> and it actually kind of comes out pretty cool in the end because it, it brings that all together. So it's all good. <laughs> So I'm going to continue to layer my background colors and to bring some dimension into the piece and just kind of let things flow here. Don't forget to subscribe and set your notify if you'd like to see more shares. And I don't just do painting. Um, on my channel, on my playlist, you'll see several playlists. I like to make neat stuff, I paint, I make jewelry, I make wreaths, I do DIY projects, and the list goes on. So if you are interested in seeing more creative shares, you want to get those notifications when I post, and I do try to post every week, um, set, set you notify and subscribe, and check out those playlists because there's more than just painting to this girl. <laughs> I like doing all kinds of neat stuff. I'm recently retired and I have time to play. I was a art major, business major back in the day, and then I raised my family. So um, now that I'm recently retired, I have time to play and share the process with you. So you never know what's going to come up on my channel. And I'm having so much fun doing this. So now we're adding more dimension to this, now that I rambled. <laughs> but um, I'm still, you know, not sure what I'm going to do with that basket at this point, but like I shared, you'll see down the road what I do with that basket. I do work with foils as well, and that's a little hint on what we're going to do. <laughs> Doesn't that look like a hot mess with all those different colors in there? But it's just so much fun and so cool. Plus, doing it this way too, it shows you the process, and it shows that when you're making stuff, it's not going to start out beautiful. It's going to end how you want it, 
but the process is like life. It's, it's a little messy. <laughs> so I wanted to add more leaves to this, so we're going to build out those leaves. To me, when you have a floral arrangement, the, the leaves and the baby breath and all those little accents just really add to that arrangement. So for me, that's what I was going for here. So there, you're going to see a lot more greenery go into this. See how thin that um, paint goes on? But that's kind of cool when you're wanting to shadow and, su and such. So you can work it to your advantage. There's a purpose for everything. <laughs> So this is um, wrapping up a little bit more. So you'll notice here how it's just changed so much from that one to this um, share. What I did is I took white spray paint and I highlighted around it and toned down that basket. That's why I put on there it's mixed mediums. There's three different mediums on here, actually four, because we're going to do the foils on the basket. We're going to do the gold and silver foils to make that basket look more like a basket more like a base so <clears throat> I'm using this smaller brush just to accentuate and bring out the petals in the flowers you just put little highlights in there Now here's another artist that you would probably enjoy watching if you like this particular type of art is Amanda Hilburn, um, the Little Blue Bird Gallery. I pick up a real good vibe and inspiration from her when I'm doing my work and I just love her um, honesty and simplicity of how to do things and she's been doing this a lot longer. So if you want to check her out, you can do that um, as well. She is another one to give you some really cool painting techniques. And something fun and funky as well. So we're just going to fill this all in here and continue on. <laughs> So on here I'm just using the little highlights just to bring those flowers together. Full disclosure, I had never done these before. <laughs> so this was really uh, a, a fun um, project to do. And you'll see more of these in the future for me as well, just different styles and techniques. I, I really enjoy doing this particular piece. It's all about the details. <laughs> Many artists, and if you're like me, you see things in your head, you'll look at something and you'll be able to take it apart in your head and then transfer that onto canvas or whatever project you're working on. And for me, getting those lines and the highlights, translating that to canvas, this, this was fun. It was, it was a fun piece to do. I appreciate you hanging out with me too. Thanks for hanging out.
So now we're going to work on these leaves just to give them some dimension and to make them pop. So I'm adding highlights to them as well as darkening and shadows. Dragging them out and having them hang over the actual um, the vase that the basket that they're sitting in. So you'll see that little darkening. You'll also notice on these shares that they're a little um, faster because I do speed them up just for you are able to catch the techniques and such, but we're not sitting here for hours. <laughs> so um, you can slow this down a little bit if you want to see the brush strokes a little bit slower or give me a comment um, down in the comment area if you do want me to slow them down a smidge. For me, this gives you... Um, a pretty full share gives you the techniques and such um, in a timely manner. Remember too that you can always pause and rewind <laughs> if you want to check out a technique. My niece actually thought I painted this fast. <laughs> like no it's video magic <laughs> so just continue to add your colors do those little accents towards the end just to bring everything together and make it pop see what I shared in the beginning this is gonna look totally different than how we started so going into your masterpieces that you do just it's the end product is what you're going for so the process just enjoy it and just have fun with it so I'm putting little white dots in there to give that um, symbolism of you know some baby breath and stuff and just to bring in that the little white makes it pop a little bit more to me so I just wanted to add some dimension a little bit more in there a little bit more pop so I'm going to go through and add little tiny white dots with my little um, tool there that I get at the Dollar Tree for a dollar twenty-five and that makes really great little dots. Down in my descriptions you'll see an Amazon link that will take you to my personal profile to um, check out the type of brushes I use in the set that I have that I use on here. It's under my painting um, list and that is my personal profile. I created those lists for you could go in there and um, see the materials I use on these particular shares. It does have that little disclaimer in there saying that they might be affiliated links but at this time when this was recorded I don't have affiliated links. That's not my main thrust. My main thrust is being able to share with you. Um, affiliated links will come later. I just wanted you to be able to go in there and um, see the materials I use and if you wanted you, you could copy that um, information and order them yourself. I get um, I get nothing at this time but I'm fine with that. That's not my goal. 
Um, so here what I just showed you was the glue that I'm using to put the foil on. And here's a little trick. You can use that glue which works great but Mod Podge works just as well. <laughs> I made that discovery. Pretty cool. So we're just going to um, put that glue on and then we are going to put our foils on and I chose to do silver on this because I thought silver would be very pretty. And I just spot throughout the um, piece here some silver just to give it that you know cohesiveness of the silver being in there and that's it I mean it's really um, fun piece to do I'm not gonna lie and say it's not that hard because this one took a little bit of work <laughs> but it was fun and you just take your time doing it this was not done in one setting this this was done over a period of time so now we're just going to seal it which was scary for me because this is the first time I've ever sealed anything because as I shared I usually work with oils and oils you don't have to seal but I went in there and I sealed it and then you'll notice too on the foils there I actually added some gold foil to it to make that just um, pop a little bit more and uh, that's it I sealed it I let it dry and it's framed now and hanging in my studio but there you go done so I hope you enjoyed this little share and I look forward to sharing more creative shares with you may the Lord bless you and keep you have a good day and a better tomorrow as my daddy would say and don't forget to subscribe and set your notify <laughs>